my apologies, I accidentally hit <laughs> stop on my recording in the previous video. <clears throat> so uh, what we want to do with our view here is we want to add some style elements right from the beginning because it just makes our life a lot easier. So the way I'm going to do that is over here in my resources area, um, <clears throat> I'm going to right click on this folder just underneath resources here, and I'm going to get a new style sheet. Now, if you don't have the ultimate edition of IntelliJ, you just have the community edition, you can just say new file, but make the extension .css. So I'm going to say styles is a good name for my style sheet. And we're going to do just a few things here. So on the root side, I'm going to do a standard font size. 24 point, and I've got a background color. You can choose any background color you want. Uh, background color. Um, the one I'm using, I grabbed from Material Palette because <laughs> I am style in apt. And you can see it comes up here with a purple. So uh, Material Palette is uh, a great, uh, great design tool. Um, <clears throat> I go to colors. I think I grabbed it under the Indigo series. I think it was number 200 or 300. Uh, no, actually it's, it's none of those. What is that 536? Well, anyways, I grabbed one of these. Maybe it was in the deep purples. I forget where I grabbed it. It's one of those anyways. Um, so it's nice though, because then you, know, you can pick uh, other colors that uh, contrast it nicely as well. So that's our background. And if I go into Scene Builder now, and I click on my anchor pane, and go to Properties, where it says Style Sheets, I can, it'll, it comes to the same uh, directory, right, by default. So I say Open. And there I have, uh, it's updated my colors. Now I'm going to put some other styles in here as well. I'm going to say Label, because we're going to have some labels for keeping score. And I'm going to say FX text fill and for our button, I'm just going to make it a little rounder. So whenever you want to round things, you just adjust their radius. Uh, so I'm going to say 40 px just sort of smooths out our button for us. So as we're building this, it's going to look a little bit better. Now, <clears throat> what I want to do is have a bunch of card images in here. And in order to do that, I need to have those images. So if I go into, we have resources, this com.example memory game folder, I'm going to right click and say new directory, and I'll call it images. And in here, I'm going to add all my card images. So you can go to my GitHub and you'll be able to get them. I'm just going to paste them in for another area. And you can see now it's all on GitHub and we have a bunch of images of cards. You can close many of these things down actually for now. So if I go into um, my scene builder now, at the top, I have this section called containers. And a container is something that's going to position things uh, on our scene for us. And I strongly recommend use the containers to position things. Uh, things such as an anchor pane, although they allow you an absolute control as to where things go, they're not very dynamic. I'll show you an example here. So if I go to controls and I drag in an image view object, and if we go up here, we can select, uh, I'll go to images, I'll select one of my images here. So there's a card. So an image view is sort of like a picture frame. You can see each of these sort of try to describe visually what they're doing. So this thing holds an image. So if I, if I have this and if we uh, do file, save, if I go back into IntelliJ for a second, 
Oh, don't leave that saved. There we go. Give me a tap date. So what we can see is in our anchor pane, we have a child object. Inside of that child object is an image view. And you can see it's got its attributes listed here. And it says layout x is 140 and y is 92. So it's an x and y coordinate. And that um, basically is the top left corner of our image view. So no problem. Now, maybe I'll duplicate that. So if I go Control D, I get a couple, couple of these out here. And I start to line them up. So if their positions are absolute, I do my best to line them up. Looks OK. I can guarantee you they're not perfect to the pixel. They're, they're close, but they're not perfect. Like the gap, you know, if I look, I think the gap here is a little less than the gap there. Um, but the bigger issue is what if my client comes back and says, hey, you know what? I want them bigger. If I now select all of these and go to layout and say, OK, well, let's uh, make the fit height a little bit bigger. Well, now they don't reposition properly, right? Because they're positioned based on their top left corner. So no matter how big or small these things get, now it, it starts to be problematic. So it's not ideal to manually position your, um, your objects. A stronger strategy is to let the, uh, the tools do it for you. And this is our end game layout, right? So what we have here are things that are sort of, you know, uh, in a bit of a grid pattern, and that's above a couple labels and a button. So, you know, if we look at this, if we were to try to draw uh, some squares around it, I would have one big square around here and another big square around this section. In fact, let's do that. Let's draw a little square just so it's really obvious as to what I'm talking about here. So, if I have Okay, <laughs> so so we can picture it as this is sort of one thing and this is another. So these two boxes are positioned one on top of the other. There's a vertical arrangement here. And if we go into Scene Builder, there's under containers, there's really common ones you'll see are HBox for horizontal alignment, a grid, flow pane. So as you add things, they just go one after the next. Um, and vertical box. There's a bunch of others, uh, but those are some of the more common ones uh, that I like to use. So again, if I look at this and I draw these nice kind of big boxes around things, these are vertically aligned. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag a vertical box onto my scene. And I'm going to right click on it and say fit to parent. So what this does is it makes the vertical box the entire size of, uh, of the application. And then what, whenever I put things into here, they're going to go into um, uh, vertically. So if I grab an image view object again as an example, and we'll throw one of our cards in it. OK, so now if I duplicate it, See how it puts them one under the next vertically. But what I really want these cards to do is, you know, be more like uh, how I would deal them onto a table, right? So I'm, I would go across horizontally. And then when I get wide enough, I'd start a new row. And there's a container that handles that for us, and it's called the flow pane. So if I go back to containers here, scroll up, this flow pane, they're trying to show it here, but Basically, it's going to distribute things uh, across. So if I select these image views, the way I multi-select them is down in the hierarchy. You click on one of them, hold Shift, and then you can grab them all at once. If I right click and I say wrap that into a flow pane, you can see it adds them side by side. And remember I talked about resizing things uh, before, right? What happens if the client comes and wants us to resize it? Well, now with all these selected, if the client asks me to change their size, no problem. 
they all adjust because the container is positioning them for us. So if we want 10 cards, um, I could duplicate this 10 times. And we got here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so we can make these cards even a little bit, uh, a little bit bigger here. Oops, only had one card selected. These aren't even cards; these are just image views. So this is just a visual representation of the cards. All right, so that's nice and easy. Uh, those might be a little too big. <laughs> um, so let's just dial it back a little bit. There we go. Now, again, these containers automatically position things for us. And the other nice thing is, see now I have all, all these images are held inside of this one container. So I can handle all of them in a collection, just like if you're familiar with the idea of an array or a list, um, the same thing, this flow pane now holds all these image views. So if I wanted to, for example, the alignment here, I can change that to be center and it'll move it to the center. And if I wanna add some spacing, I can go to layout and I'll put in say 20 by 20 little gap and it's, you know, so fast and easy to uh, uh, to modify this. So then if we go back to our design here, at the bottom we have another section here, right? And if we if we really look at that, so if we look at this, really, oops, what we have is we have uh, this item which is vertically arranged and that is beside this other item. So these two boxes are sort of side by side. They're horizontally arranged. So what I'm gonna do is I'll create a little container to hold these, these uh, labels here. And we'll have another uh, over here for our button. So let's go back into scene builder here. Where's my scene builder? <laughs> there we go. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna use something called the grid pane and drag it into my vertical box. So you can see the grid pane here, it, it created by default a three by two uh, grid. Now, what I really want is a two by two grid to show my scores, right? So if I come back to here, I'm gonna have a label that says guesses and a colon, and then another, a different label shows just the number changing. So that way I can get like beautiful alignment uh, between the scores here. So I don't need a three by two. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select by left clicking and then you can just hit delete and it'll get rid of uh, that extra row. And if I go to the controls side, labels are things that display text. The user can't interact with them. They can only read them. So I'm gonna drag in four label objects here. And this one I'll say is guesses. You can double click on them or you can select them once and under properties, you can type up here. This is the number correct. And to start with, these will both be zero. Okay, now this looks a little bit goofy. Our container here for our grids far too wide. Uh, but again, what we wanna do is we want to have it side by side horizontally with this button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this grid pane and wrap it in a horizontal box. I'm just going to have to stretch this over. The way to do this is click on your grid pane. And now that the grid pane selected, if you, you know, you can see if you hover, you'll get uh, that double headed uh, arrow. If you hold your, button down, your mouse button, you can drag it. So now that part looks okay. And if I go and drag a button down into this horizontal box, remember when we updated our style sheet, I, we talked about the radius. So if we go to our style sheet here, we put the radius. 
that 40 px is what makes this button nice and round. So in here, I'll just double click and say play again. And we're almost all done. What I want to do now is I want uh, this H box here to be more centered. So again, because the container holds it all, I can click on the container in my hierarchy. And on the property side, I can say alignment, center it. And if I go down to the layout down here, I can put in some spaces because there's these are a little too tight together. So maybe 150, just spaces them out a little. And then the only thing I'm not a fan of is, you know, the cards are right against the top, but we're not against the bottom. And the button to card is really tight. So these are all things that are really defined by my top level vertical box here. So with my vertical box selected, I go to the layout tab. I'm going to put a little padding around everything. And if you click the little button there, it'll shoot it over. And I'll also add spacing. So in between each row, we'll add in 20. So now our layout is complete and <clears throat> it, uh, it visually looks nice. Um, it's not interactive yet. We got a little bit to go, but let's test this out. If we go back into our program, before we would load it and it would just be a little gray square. Now when we load it, we get this layout. So in the next video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out how do we make the user be able to interact with each of these image views and flip them over and do some cool stuff in our controller.